Thus far in electrochemistry, we have seen from the Nernst equation that we can get the Gibbs energy of a, reac of a reaction depending on what the EMF of a cell is. So we have the Nernst equation saying delta G of reaction is minus number of moles of electrons transferred times Faraday's constant times the EMF of the cell. So that's all good and fantastic. We can determine if the reaction is spontaneous. We can determine what direction it goes in, all those things from the Gibbs energy. But what if we want to calculate uh, what the entropy is or what the enthalpy is? Uh, we only have the Gibbs energy here from the Nernst equation. So there's a few uh, quick little derivations we can do to figure out what the enthalpy and what the entropy are. So knowing what the definition of entropy is in terms of the Gibbs energy, we can say that the reaction uh, entropy is equal to the minus partial derivative of the reaction Gibbs energy with respect to temperature at constant pressure. And that's just because entropy is the negative partial derivative of Gibbs energy with respect to temperature. So for reaction entropy, it's the same with reaction Gibbs, Gibbs energy. Okay, but we have this in terms of E cell as well. So we have to do the chain rule. So this is equal to minus partial derivative of E cell with respect to temperature at constant pressure times the partial derivative of reaction Gibbs energy with respect to the EMF. Okay, pretty standard chain rule stuff there. All right, what are these values? Um, this is just something we're going to have to measure, but for this we can calculate from the Nernst equation. So differentiate this equation uh, with respect to E cell, and we should get that the partial derivative of reaction Gibbs energy uh, with respect to E cell is equal to minus NF. Pretty simple, they're just linear with each other there. Okay, so we're going to plug in these values. So that means that our entropy of reaction for an electrochemical cell is given by positive, substituting in the minus sign there, with the minus sign there, positive NF times partial derivative of the EMF with respect to temperature at constant pressure. Okay, so that was straightforward enough. That's our entropy. How do we get our enthalpy? Well, we can recall from our one of our definitions of Gibbs energy, G equals H minus TS. So delta G of reaction is equal to delta H of reaction minus temperature times delta S of reaction. So that means if we simplify this for H, we get delta H of reaction is equal to delta G of reaction plus T delta S of reaction. Okay, so we have to solve that for our enthalpy. We have the Gibbs energy of reaction from the Nernst equation. We have the ent entropy of reaction from this equation up here. So we can just take the two of those, uh, substitute those in together, and then factor out the factor of NF. Delta H of reaction is going to be number of moles of electrons times Faraday's constant times E cell. Well, it's going to be a minus sign here, so <clears throat> we'll do T times partial derivative of E cell with respect to T minus E cell. <clears throat> okay, so that is our enthalpy of reaction, which is the heat that's generated during a constant pressure process. So we have number of moles <clears throat> times Faraday's constant times and then we get just the minus E cell from the Nernst equation, and we get um, T times the entropy with part, which is partial derivative of E cell with respect to temperature. All right, so with that, we have all three of these values. We can calculate what the Gibbs energy is. We can calculate what the entropy is. We can calculate what the enthalpy is. So if we wanted to get what these values were, uh, how would we design some experiment to measure them? So we would measure the EMF 
of the cell over some range of temperatures close to our temperature of interest for whatever we want to calculate these values for. And then we would develop some function which de describes the temperature dependence of our E cell. So we would develop as a function of temperature this E cell and usually that could be done just as some simple polynomial, some small Taylor series around whatever temperature of interest. Then given that function, we just need to compute whatever derivative there is, compute the partial derivative of it with respect to temperature. Hopefully your pressure is constant. And then thus you can from that compute whatever value from your E-cell measurements and your derivative of your E-cell measurements, you can compute whatever values of delta H, delta S, and delta G that you would like.